Was there really a female pope? What strange disease caused whole villages to dance madly for days? And who's the real Pied Piper? I don't know, but I know where we can find out. Well, this one seems easy enough. I punch in female Pope, and there she is. It says here that after the death of Pope Leo IV in 855, an Englishman named John of Mays occupied the papal chair for two years, seven months, and four days. And that's when they found out he was a she. She gave birth to a child during a procession from St. Peter's, somewhere between the Colosseum and St. Clement's. There she died, and supposedly was buried on that spot. It's a great story, but it's not the only one. There are literally hundreds of manuscripts about St. Joan, and many tell a different story. In an equally popular version, she was Pope in 1099, and was discovered when she gave birth while mounting a horse. In this story, the citizens were so enraged, they tied her to the tail of the horse, dragged her through the streets, and stoned her to death. But did she really exist? From a contemporary point of view, most of the information that I'm finding says no. For one thing, there's no mention of a female pope until almost 400 years after the event was supposed to have taken place. And in the history of papal lineage, there's no spot where a Pope Joan could have fit in. Most scholars tend to agree. And yet, her story was widely believed for hundreds of years. There were statues of her in Siena Cathedral. At the Basilica in St. Peter's Square, there were carvings by Bernini of a woman wearing a papal crown. And most intriguing of all is the enormous purple marble chair on which popes once sat as they were being crowned. The chair has a strange opening, something like a toilet seat, reportedly used to check the testiculus habit, or whether the Pope had testicles. And there are still plenty of believers on the web as well. So, true or false, the legend of Pope Joan lives on. Well, this one's turning out to be a little bit tougher to find mainly because I don't have a name for what I'm looking for. It was an epidemic that swept through middle-aged towns and cities like the plague, with many symptoms and many names. People danced uncontrollably in the streets, foaming at the mouth, screaming of wild visions. They would dance until they collapsed from exhaustion, and even then they'd flail in agony until forcefully restrained. Crowds gathered, religious ceremonies were held. Even musicians filled the streets to accompany the dancers, as it was widely believed that music was a cure. Large-scale occurrences date back as far as 857, culminating for many in death. In 944, some 40,000 people in the south of France died from it. Symptoms were called holy fire, St. Anthony's Fire, and St. Vitrus's Dance. Many of these episodes can be blamed on deviant religious sects who traveled across the countryside helping create a mass hysteria. But there were, in many cases, physical causes as well. Airget tainted rye poisoned thousands and thousands of people throughout the Middle Ages. Survivors recall the symptoms, insects crawling under the skin, seeing all sorts of wild or deformed animals, visions of fire and blood running down the walls, and violent convulsions. It has even been suggested by many that the Salem witch trials were a result of airget poisoning. In modern times, the most recent event occurred in August 1951 in the small French town of Pont-Saint-Esprit. Hundreds were poisoned and several died. 
And in the period of 1938 to 1943, while conducting research into the causes of ergot poisoning, Dr. Albert Hoffman accidentally isolated one of the hallucinogenic properties, LSD. And that brings us to the Pied Piper. I always thought this was a fairy tale, but it turns out it's a mystery. English-speaking audiences are most familiar with the story from the Robert Browning poem written in 1842. His inspiration came from, among other people, the Brothers Grimm, whose version came out in 1808. Their story was a compilation from 11 different sources. Not surprisingly, the stories all trace back to the town of Hamlin in Germany. According to a Hamlin historian named Martin Humberg, around 1300, a stained glass window was added to the Central Market Church in Hamlin, showing an old figure of a man in colored clothes surrounded by a crowd of children. That window has been lost since the late 1600s, but the inscription around it has been reconstructed, and it reads, in the year of 1284, on John and Paul's day, was the 26th of June. By a piper, dressed in all kinds of colors, 130 children born in Hamlin were seduced and lost at the Calvary near the Coppin. There was a Deacon Lewd of Hamlin in 1384, who was said to have in his possession a course book that contained a Latin verse giving an eyewitness account of the event but the book has been lost since the late 17th century. So what really happened? Well, there certainly are a lot of theories. My wife's first comment was that there were even perverts back then. And that's possible. Some say the children fell victim to an accident, perhaps drowning in the River Wesser or buried in a landslide. Others suggest the children contracted some disease during an epidemic and were let out of town to die in order to protect the rest of the city. Perhaps there was an early form of the Black Death. Another possibility would be an outbreak of cholera or St. Andrew's Fire. Some believe they were taken to be part of a pilgrimage, a military campaign, or a new children's crusade. Around this time, Eastern Europe was being recolonized, and it's very possible that the children wound up in other towns, whether by their own free will, by treachery, or by force. Certainly, everyone knew exactly what had happened in 1284, and it was tragic, and the loss unforgettable. Whether by accident or design, the tale changed around 1500 to a mythical, magical legend, and through it, we're left to draw our own conclusions. Well, we found a lot of information, but not all the answers. And that's what I like about a good mystery. What you don't find out turns out to be just as interesting as what you did. If you want to try and solve these yourself, here's a list of some of the places we've been to get you started. So what mysteries and historic events do you want to know about? There's a lot of information out there. All we got to do is find it.